Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, tonight, I, I would like to let you in on the inside of television. You know, uh, we have a lot of problems in television. For instance, learning a half-hour script each week, that's a, that's a bit of a job, you know. But we in television have a little system. We have little devices, little tricks that enable us to, to learn our lines, such as some fellas paint them on a blackboard so they can talk and then look, you know, very surreptitiously. And those other fellas, like there's one fellow I know, he writes everything on his fingernails. <laughs> He had a very bad job once, he did. He was so nervous before the show, he stands back there, ate up half his script. <laughs> the, the fellow, though, I think he's going too far. This one friend of mine I know, he writes all the lines inside his eyelid. <laughs> if you ever see an actor on television looking like this, he's not falling asleep, he's just memorizing his lines. <laughs> see, as far as I'm concerned, I don't use any devices like this because... When I come out on the stage, I just know exactly what I'm going to say. <laughs> That's all there is to it, really. <laughs> First joke. <clears throat> man, I just was fishing, and I caught a doctor fish. Second man, what is a doctor fish? First man. Dr. Fish is a sturgeon. <laughs> Gonna have this cup laundered. The second joke. Wife, I've made you some policeman cookies. Husband, what are policeman cookies? <laughs> wrote it here somewhere. <laughs> Said he was going to write the whole thing on here. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have the joke in a <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I knew he wrote it. He said he was... Oh. <laughs> what are policeman cookies? <laughs> Cop cakes. <laughs> That's very kind of you. I thought I could carry it off and you wouldn't know that I was actually reading it. But I wasn't. Anyway, oh, I'm not reading anything, really. I'm, I'm just kind of thinking. See, I made a picture called Margie, and I was thinking the other day, I heard some music. It was back in 1928. I could just see it now. Remember 1928? Women used to wear the short skirts and the dresses that no waist, you know, boom right down, and the close-fitting hats. With the, with the curls up here, the fellas wore high jackets. I can see it now. And there was the Charleston dance then. Oh, I'd love to see that Charleston dance. <laughs>
have to touch everything. Gee, Uncle George sure lived in a terrific place. Too bad he had to die. I liked him. Because he was a wonderful man, and, and we loved him very much. Oh, now, now, Charles, please don't go in Uncle George's laboratory. I'll leave everything alone. He would have wished it that way. Hey, Mom, what's nitrous oxide? Nitrous oxide, a laughing gas. Now, and please leave it alone. Laughing gas? Laughing gas. Oh, I'll go and bring the others. Now, please get away from that laughing gas stand. Mother, mother, I... Oh, Charles, I this, is no but this is no place for a young boy. Now, you go and wait for me in the car. Oh, mother, there's Please. something broken Will over you? the... Will you? No I back did. talk. Go and wait for me in the car. <laughs> Are all the heirs present? We all here, but Alan, his favorite nephew. Now that we are all assembled, I shall read the contents of your uncle's last will and testament. <coughs> I, George Waterman, being of sound mind, hereby do bequeath to my beloved heirs my entire estate. Oh, how Beloved generous I am. The entire estate. The late George Waterman was a very generous man, and his untimely demise has been a great shock to us all. <laughs> we have been, we have been a closely knit family, and now that I am gone, this is my solemn wish that you all continue in the same close association that we've had through the past. Even though I am not with you, your lives must still have the same dignity and purpose. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you treat a solemn occasion like this with such, such levity? Our family motto, live with dignity and purpose. I'm only glad Uncle George isn't here to witness this, this outburst. Very well said, Alan. Thanks for all of us. Yes, Aunt Hildegard. <laughs> Pray continue. <laughs> to my niece, Henrietta, who has her own income, I bequeath my philosophy. Live with dignity and purpose. I've been cut off without a penny.
little George. <clears throat> and now to my nephew Donald. I do hereby bequeath the worldly sum of $150,000. But I hereby instruct that this sum of $150,000 be immediately turned over by Donald to my favorite charity, the Missouri Home for Aged Chemists. <laughs> In addition, Donald, I also bequeath to you our family heritage, a life of dignity and purpose. Control yourself. silly school children. Pull yourselves together. Remember the family motto, dignity and purpose. gone far enough, far enough. And in memory of dear Uncle George, I think it only fitting that we should observe 10 seconds of silence. very much. Hello? Hello, Al. How are you? Oh, I, I, I'm all right. Well, what's the matter? You look very unhappy. Well, I was just into a reading of a will, and I thought I'd get left quite a bit of the estate, and, well... Well, didn't you get anything? Oh, got a few laughs. <laughs> really, I had plans. I mean, I... When I got the money, I was going to buy a new suit, you know, a tuxedo and a nice new car. And, and the main thing I was going to do, I was going to drive to Macombo and, and see Monica Lewis. Sing. Oh, were you really going to go to Macombo and see Monica Lewis? Yeah, but now I just can't do it. <laughs> well, um, I have something to tell you. What? I am Monica Lewis. You are! And honey, since you can't go to Macombo, why don't we just pretend that you're there and you sit over there and imagine you're ringside and I'll go over there and sing and... Honey. 
I'm going to sing just for you. Gee. Wait till the kids in the Beaver Patrol hear about this. <laughs> see you tonight. Can you come right over? Yeah, well, Mom and Dad are here, and I've told them all about you. Yeah. Well, well hurry over, and I'll get ready. Goodbye. Oh, Alan Young is on his way over. Oh, oh, will you entertain him until I get finished dressing? What's the matter with George? George is such a nice boy. He always brings me something when he comes over. And he helped your father fix the chandelier. He's such a nice boy. And he's a, a businessman, too. He's got a head on his shoulders. Oh, please, Daddy, I'm not interested in George. Oh, well, who is this Alan Young? Well, I told you about him, Father. He worked in Messler's Meat Market. Is he the fellow that locked himself in the icebox? <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't his fault. Mr. Messler pushed him. Yeah. Well, anyway, he moved from there and got himself a job in the bank. Isn't he the one who locked himself in the vault? <laughs> Yeah, Messler followed him down to the bank and pushed him in. Oh, Daddy, stop. He's a lovely boy. And he's very happy with his new job in the hardware store. I want you to be real nice to him until I come down. Come in. Sorry I'm late, but on my way out of the hardware store, I got locked in the cellar. I'll be right in, Alan. Peggy, I, I brought you some flowers. Oh, thanks. Mother, there's a vase in the kitchen. Oh, that's all right. I'll, I'll, I'll find it. I'll put them in my cell. So I don't bother getting up. <laughs> He's locked himself in the closet. <laughs> Naturally. Put those pansies any place. Thank <laughs> you. 
<laughs> you two been married long? <laughs> Mother called your father in the kitchen to fix the faucets. He went and fixed the faucet. Oh, oh, well, then that's your chance to get in good with Daddy. Go in and help him like George always does. I never fixed a faucet in my life. Well, just show him that you want to be helpful. <laughs> hey, where on earth did you meet this young man? Mother, why don't you give Alan a chance? No, 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 I'll keep away from that fuck, will you? Mom, it's expensive. You're gonna like it. Oh, how Hiya, Peg. Oh. Here's a little bouquet for your buttonhole. Oh, you lucky people. Oh, Say, George, where's I Pop? I got some cigars for him. Hi. Where's Pop? Hi, oh, hey, George. How are you? Oh, how are you? I'm glad to see you. Uh, what do you say? Thanks. You're a fine young man. Oh, I'm oh. glad to see you. What's going on in the stock market today? Oh, it's fine. Fine. Good. Alan, Alan, this is your chance to get in the conversation, and I'll run get my jack. Anything usual happen? Well, utilities look good, and what with increased trading, looks like we're in for a bullish trend. Yeah, well, I've been watching that uh, Board of Trade session. Uh, wheat and corn are hitting the highs in the Chicago pits. Yeah, pits. <laughs> you say? Pits. <laughs> you got a lot of nerve voicing an opinion in an interesting conversation like this. A mug that locks himself in a nice box. Locks himself in a nice box? Yes, and he locked himself in a vault, too. Locked himself in a vault? Ha! <laughs> It was real silly. Only a person like me could do it. It was really very, very easy. Uh, <laughs> sure it was. I'd like to prove it to you if I could. Come on, you. Over here, see? Would you like to come? I'll show you what happened, see? The ice box was very simple. To open the door. Well, I looked in, and Mr. Messler was... It. Would you be Mr. Messler? Yes. Sir. He was in there, you see? <laughs> I looked in, and I saw Mr. Messler. Uh, right in. He was right in there. 
Oh, and his assistant was in there too, see, because I had a lot of things I was going to carry in, you see. So there, you, you just stand right there, see. Now, I was looking in. I have arms full, you see. I was standing like this. Give me a good push. You'll see how I went good in. Good push, right? Yeah. See, I was standing just like this. And I, I just... <laughs> yeah, yes. Mom and Pop, and where's George? They got locked in the closet. <laughs> Would you like to go to a movie with me? Oh, yes, Alan, I'd love to. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you very much. We'll be with you again next week at the same time. I hope you'll join us then. Thank you. Good night.